Hi students, good morning to everybody. I welcome you all for the session that is a meet. I hope you can follow me what I am saying related to the meet. It is very important to follow methodology to understand the facts rather than simply memorizing the facts as for the NEET examination is concerned. So it is mainly an aptitude test. You have to use your brain instantly and accordingly you have to answer. Then only you can just follow the answers easily while you are attending the examination. Now I would like to start the chapter physiology. The study of functions of organs and organ systems. And in this chapter, the heading, I would like to take the unit digestion and absorption, the first one, as it is the first class. Now, and this one we already studied about what we call the board syllabus. I am adding only a few things only for your understanding. Now, I start with the length of the alimentary canal. You know the digestive system is formed of two components one is the alimentary canal and the digestive glands. Now, the first one, the measurement, the statistical data about the length of the alimentary canal. This is about 9 to 10 meters long. And again, the alimentary canal is longer in the case of herbivorous animals. The reason for that one, they have to digest cellulose. The cellulose digestion takes longer duration. That's why the length of the alimentary canal is longer in the case of herbivorous animals than in carnivores. So longer. This is longer in herbivorous animals. Longer in herbivorous animals. Now, so you, what are the different components of the alimentary canal and their length? So we are starting with esophagus. The length of esophagus. It is about 25 centimeter long. 25 centimeter long. And again the place where no digestion takes place is esophagus. No digestion. The place where no digestion takes place. And here you see that when the food is propelled down by means of what is called by means of peristalsis. By means of peristalsis. Now food is being swallowed. The act of swallowing is called deglutition. The act of swallowing is called deglutition. So this is act of swallowing. Act of swallowing. It's called deglutition. So if the food is being regurgitated, if the peristalsis occurs in the reverse direction, then it's called antiperistalsis. Then it's called antiperistalsis. If it appears in the reverse direction. This antiperistalsis is also called by name amstalsis. Amstalsis. Also called by name amstalsis. Now the swallowing is the reflex activity. A complex reflex activity. The center for swallowing is located in medulla oblongata. So this one swallowing a complex reflex activity. Complex reflex activity. Now the center for swallowing, the center for controlling center, we can say the controlling center for swallowing is present in medulla oblongata. Medulla oblongata. Now the peristalsis actually by means of the food bolus is being propelled. Now if you are taking the alimentary canal you already studied there are four layers. Outer cerebral layer, then we have just what is called the muscular layer, then submucosa, then mucosa. Now one of the layers is absent in esophagus. The layer which is absent in esophagus is called cerebral layer. Cerebral layer is absent. Cerebral layer is absent in esophagus when compared to other parts. So these are some of the points. Esophagus 25 cm, no digestion, peristalsis, deglutition, 
antibody sources, then complex reflex activity controlled by medulla oblongate. Now, and before this entering into the stroma, you have what is called the buccal cavity. Now, the buccal cavity, the roof of the buccal cavity is called actually the palate. The roof of buccal cavity is called actually palate. The anterior part of the palate is called actually hot palate. Hot palate. And the posterior one is called a soft palate. The posterior one is called a soft palate. Now the soft palate hangs into hangs into the pharynx in the form of a flap. That is called actually uvula. That is called uvula or velum palati. Velum palati. So this is nothing but the soft palate. Uvula is nothing but the soft palate in the form of flap projects into the pharynx and that is called velum palati or uvula. Okay. The arrangement of teeth in buccal cavity is called dentition. Now the human dentition is of different types. It may be thicodont. Thicodont. The meaning for the one placed in bony cavity. Placed in sockets. That is a bony cavity. There are teeth also described as diphyodont. Diphyodon. That is, we have two sets of teeth during development. Two sets of teeth. So, one you have what is called the milk teeth. Milk teeth. Which is being erupted normally after six months of age. After six months. After six months. Another set of teeth, what we can say, permanent teeth. Permanent teeth. So it is being erected after six years. So we can say up to 12 years. Permanent teeth. Now, if you take the number of teeth, in the case of milk teeth, the total number of teeth, total number, or teeth. 20. And here the total number of teeth 32. 32. So we have the dental formula. It can be represented each half of the upper jaw and lower jaw. So now the dental formula is equal to for the milk teeth that is what is called 2 0. Actually just 2 zero, sorry. 2102. 2102. Two, two. Now the teeth normally absent in milk teeth premolars. Premolars absent. Premolars absent. So if you're taking that one total. Now you know that one here. 2123. 2123. Two, this is a dental formula for the permanent teeth. Multiple big 32. Now here you can see the milk teeth 30, sorry 20 and the what is called the permanent teeth 32. So which teeth absent in milk teeth premolars? Now I mentioned about the teeth are diffused down. But some teeth are found only once. Some teeth are found only once. Now that means we have that is what we have. Eight premolars. Eight premolars. We have eight premolars. And we have just normally, these are all the teeth normally absent here. Upper jaw four, lower jaw four. Eight premolars. Then we have actually the four molars. But normally we have just actually see that one. Just we see that one, three plus three plus three, that is twelve teeth. Now we have the eight premolars are formed only once. 
and also the last molar which is called as a wisdom teeth that is also formed only once. The eight premolars and four molars they are called monophyodont. Monophyodont. They are formed only once. So all the eight premolars are absent. Upper jaw four, lower jaw four, just eight premolars and four molars. So we have normally you know that one three molars on each half. All together twelve. After this one, the last molar, the third molar in each half is found only after the age of what we have eighteen, or we can say maybe twenty-one to twenty-five. Such four molars are formed only after the age of twenty-one, called as a wisdom teeth. So we have they are called monophyodont. So if you are taking the teeth out of thirty-two, twenty teeth are what is called diphyodont. Formed twice, and twelve teeth are monophyodont. What I mentioned about these are all, because you see that one, the milk teeth they have fallen and new teeth are formed, so they are formed twice. Whereas we have the premolars and the last one molar in each side, each half, on to the four molars called as the wisdom teeth. They are formed only just actually once, hence called monophyodont. Okay. So at your age, you have a number of teeth, twenty-eight only. The reason for one, the third molar, the four third molar. You can say number four, position third. The third molar is found only after the age of twenty-one. So that is called as a wisdom teeth. So at your age, you have only twenty-eight. The last molar, which is called as a wisdom teeth, formed only after the age of twenty-one. So that's one question. How many teeth are present at your age? That may be a question. That is twenty-eight one. Now, the codon, the phyodon, we have our teeth also form heterodon. Our teeth also form heterodon because we have four different types of teeth. 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 So in the case of a rabbit, the number of teeth normally twenty-eight. This is the general formula for rabbit. Here we see that one the canine teeth absent. Canine teeth absent. Now there is one question came repeated in the Jibber question paper. That's why I would like to see in rabbit the total number of teeth is equal to twenty-eight. Now what's happening here? Now the canine teeth absent. There is a space present between what is called the incisors and premolars. That space is called diastema. Diastema. So space present between that is what we have actually incisors. And canines, and canines. That's about what we have. Some dental formula. We have also animals having highest number in the case of opossum, etc. Now we will discuss later one by one. Now, if you are taking the structural aspect of teeth, each tooth is formed of a material what is called dentine. The bone-like material that is called as a dentine. This dentin is secreted by odontoblast, the cells. Odontoblast, odontoblast cells. Okay, the hard bone-like structure which makes up what is called the tooth is called dentin, and which is secreted by the odontoblast cells. Now we have what is called the crown region. The crown region is covered with what is called enamel. Enamel. So this enamel is secreted by another cell, what is called ameloblast. Ameloblast. The cells which secrete enamel. So this is the hardest secretion. The enamel is the hardest secretion in the animal kingdom, or we can say, in human body, the hardest secretion is enamel. That is one question. Hardest secretion is enamel. It is secreted by ameloblast. Formed of a soft hydrosapatite. 
Thai dogs have a trait, that's the name of the sound, that's not necessary. Okay, now there is a bone, actually dentine and then enamel. Now the tooth is fixed in a bony cavity by cementum. The tooth is fixed in a bony cavity by cementum and also another membrane, periodontal membrane. Periodontal membrane. Because it's a thicodont teeth. The tooth is placed in a bony cavity fixed by means of what is called a bony like cementum and also a membrane called periodontal membrane. That's about related to what we have the tooth. Now we have to go for some more information related to the stomach and also other parts of the intestine. Now human teeth are also called bunodont teeth. This is because of the presence of shallow cusp. It is not present in all the teeth. The grinding teeth, premolars and molars are called what is called actually pinodon. The meaning for that one, suppose you are taking a teeth, is having a shallow cavity with the grooves and such a type of teeth called what is known as pinodon teeth. Only the premolars and molars, the grinding teeth represent the pinodon teeth. Now the tongue. Now it is attached to the floor of the buccal cavity at its base by what is called a ligament. The ligament is called frontal lump. The ligament is called frontal lump. And normally the tongue is a skeletal muscle. Not a smooth muscle. It is a skeletal muscle. On the surface of tongue we have what is called papillae. Papillae. Nothing but the collection of taste tubers. Collection of taste tubers. Now, in human being, three different types of papillae. One, filiform papillae, filamentous type. Number two, fungiform. Number three, circumvallate. Circumvallate papillae. It is normally 8 to 12, least in number, but largest one, arranged in the form of inverted V, towards the post end of the stomach. Now, the filiform or filiform papillae are more in number, more in number. And filiform presents some are just less than what is called filiform. Now, but in the case of rabbit, we have one more type of what is called just the papillae, that is all foliate. Foliate papillae. So we have in the case of rabbit, there are four types of papillae. This foliate papillae is absent in man, absent in humans. This is another thing. Now, this is about what we have the buccal cavity, the oral cavity regarding what we have the ovula, villa palate, the frenulum, etc. I mentioned already about the esophagus. Now if we are taking the stomach, the stomach is being formed of actually three parts. The shape of the stomach is J shape. Now a few words about the stomach. The shape of the stomach is J shape. It is a temporary storage of food. It is concerned with the temporary storage of food. It is being divided into three parts. Cardiac, fundic and pyloric region or pyloric region. Now this is a cardiac region. And this is a fundic region. This is what we have. Sorry. This is a fundic region. And this is a pyloric region. Pyloric region. Now, at the junction of the stomach and then what we have? The cardiac stomach and the esophagus. There is a sphincter. What is called cardiac sphincter. It regulates the flow of what is called the food from the esophagus into the stomach. Now, the newborn children they have very often regurgitation, what is called vomiting. There are different reasons for vomiting. One of the reasons for vomiting, now this cardiac sphincter is poorly developed in the case of newborn infants. That's why they very often regurgitate the milk. Now another sphincter present between what is called the pyloric stomach and the duodenum is called pyloric sphincter. It regulates the flow of partially digested food from the stomach into the duodenum. 
that's about called expector, pylori expector. We can see the glands of stomach plate. This is only concerned with actually the external one. So it is a bag like structure concerned with the storage. Now the stomach is followed by what we have the small intestine. Small intestine. Now it's being divided into three parts. One, duodenum. Number two, what is called jejunum. And number three, ilia. Now the duodenum is about 25 centimeter long. The jejunum is about 8 feet long or we can say about 2 point just 5 meet. The ilium is about what is called 12 feet long or we have 3.5 meet. So the small intestine is roughly what we have 6.25 meet or we can say 20 feet. Roughly we can say 6 meet or 20 feet. Now duodenum is a place of what is called digestion. This is a place of digestion. And these two are mainly concerned with the place of absorption. Place of absorption, concern with absorption. Okay, so that's about what's called the small intestinal link. Then we have some regions in the small intestine if you're taking. Now we have large circular folds present on the inner wall of what is called the mucosa layer. The large circular folds, large circular folds present mainly in the ileum region or we can say small intestine is called wall of Kerkin. Wall of Kerkin. This is called wall of Kerkin. Wall of Kerkin. This is nothing but large circle of folds present on the inner mucosa layer of the small intestine or we can say mainly ileum that is called large muscular folds called wall of Kerkin. Okay, this is one. Now, if you are taking the stomach, the inner mucosa layer of the stomach is folded, is folded to form gastric rogue. Gastric rogue. What is gastric rogue? These are all the foldings formed by the mucosa layer of the stomach, the innermost layer. That is called as a gastric rogue. So, a few words I mentioned about the small intestine, the length also. Now we have to go for the large industry. Large industry. Now it's about 1.5 meter long. 1.5 meter long. Roughly about 5 feet. 5 feet. Now it's being divided into colon, then rectum, and anus. Now, if you are taking the colon, this is a part and taking the one, I studied already the different components. It has normally sac like pouches, outward sac like pouches called hostra. What are hostra? The, the sac like outward pouches. of colon. Now this colon has three longitudinal muscle bands. Three longitudinal muscle bands. These are called tinea coli. Tinea coli. Now we have colon, rectum, anus. Along with you have to know that one cecum, cecum, and vermiform appendix. Along with vermiform appendix. Now cecum and vermiform appendix are vestigial organs. 
vestigial organs because they are not functional. Now, actually, these organs are larger. Cecum is larger. Cecum is larger in herbivorous animals. Herbivorous animals because it is a region of cellulose digestion. It is a region of cellulose digestion. It's a region of cellulose digestion. Now at the junction of uh, the colon and the ileum, there is a wall that is called ileocecal wall. Ileocecal wall. This is also called Bohin wall. This is also called Bohin wall. And this is the wall present at the junction of present at the junction of small in the strand, that is an ileum and a colon. Ileum and a colon. That's about the large intestine. We have the rectum, the place of storage of waste, and then it is eliminated by a process of defecation. Other structures we can see one by one later in the next class because it is a first class. I'm just uh, completing this one. We'll conclude with more information in the coming classes. Okay. Thank you.